Good morning, dear viewers of Smart24 TV. My name is Dr. Joseph Tinjeba, and this is a weekend of where we are very much concerned to have a discussion, a deliberate discussion that is looking at how our country can move forward economically, socially, and in all other spheres of, of life for the well-being of our citizens. For all those who've been at work during the week, you're welcome from your busy schedule. Together with me, I'm with our dear guests, the honorary members of parliament. And before I introduce them, it is a debate way as we respond to a certain commentary by the speaker that the parliament should go nearer to the people. Dear guests, by inviting you here, we are in agreement with you to use this platform, how you can be able to present the views that are projected from the legislative point of view in an area of which we'll discuss that you are much more covenant with. Kindly greet the viewers from the left, from the other side. You're welcome, Dr. Thank Thank you very much for you. having me. And yes, uh, first of all, really, uh, Smart24. Yes, sir. 24 TV. 24 TV. Yes, sir. You're doing great work. Thank you, sir. And uh, I think introducing something new that uh, the rest of you, the, the media house the industry, will pick up from you. Thank you sir. The idea that uh, what we discuss must be relevant, Thank you, must be relevant to the times we're in. Mm -hmm. The aspirations of this nation, you, you've picked it. You have no time for things which really uh, don't matter much. Yes, sir. And I want to congratulate you for that. Yes, sir. Now, our listeners, uh, my name is Ansaba Buturo. I represent the people of Bufumbira East constituents in Kisoro district. Mm -hmm. And talking about Kisoro district, I wish you all come to Kisoro to see what an amazing <laughs> district it is. And I believe God, when he was making Uganda, mm -hmm. he started in Kisoro district. Yes. But I'm honored mm -hmm. to be here and uh, to join my colleague as well. Thank you. He favored the Kisoro district. By the way, the, the viewers, it is not only just a good inspiration. It is a deliberate statement where it is known even in the national budget in terms of the revenue, the national revenue, tourism, the tourism sector, a big portion of money yeah. is being generated. I mean, revenue is being generated from mm. Kisoro. 81%. 81% of the tourism. 81%. Yes. And it's no wonder Kisoro is known as the part of Uganda. Uh, and in addition, Kisolo district, it enables with the Democratic Republic of Congo yes. and also Rwanda, yes. meaning that you have the potential for market for your products, especially absolutely, by absolutely. the fact that you, you share the border, you know, two borderlines. That's right. Opportunity. Uh, the only third district in the country to be having two international borders. You have Koboko, you have Kabong, and Kisolo. These are the only districts that have two international borders. Just a quick one, mm -hmm. the, when Churchill mm -hmm. visited Uganda, mm -hmm. he uttered those words about Uganda being the part of Africa from Kisoro. And that's why Kisoro now is, has that distinction. Of being I know you're passionate the of today. Uganda. <laughs> <laughs> we told you one time you should take us there yeah. and you facilitate just some fuel. We, we are going to do that. Yeah. And we shall broadcast here to popularize your area yeah. beyond Uganda and even internationally. Thank you. Thank it is still a debt to you, Honorable. It is indeed. Please, Honorable, you are welcome once again. It has been long. <laughs> they were asking me, where are you? Where? So you're welcome back here. Yeah, good morning, dear viewers. Indeed, it's been quite a while, but mm -hmm. uh, national duties also take another call, but it hasn't been intentional. Yeah. Uh, my name is Goretti Namuga. I represent the Povmogola County, that is Sembabwe District. I was admiring the comments of the Honorable Sababu Tulo about sort of being a, an area of tourism. Mm -hmm. I should also invite him to Sembabwe to come and have the best matoke in this country. We mm -hmm. have good coffee. Mm. And you know, <laughs> I wa we want yeah. to congratulate you. You're able to save your farmers so that their coffee maybe is not so just one person. I'm telling you, so Dr. <laughs> yes. Sababuturo, support us in the area of taking coffee mm. because that is one of our major exports. And really, I should uh, thank you, Tim, for wholeheartedly supporting us actually, supporting our people, not us, but it was a national matter.
Mm. Coffee is a, is a, a national, a national uh, uh, product mm. and it's one of our major exports that anything that you know, brings in uh, issues of mismanagement, it can be handled boldly as a national matter, not personal. Thank you. Um, I really thank those Ugandans who have made it uh, to always go for work. You know, mm. it's, uh, most people say Uganda, no, no employment, but there are those who intentionally refuse to go and work. Mm. So really for the youth, mm. this is your generation. Mm. You know, we cannot keep lamenting. Mm. Find something to do. Lament as you go for work. Mm. Uh, I wish you the best as we listen in. Thank you so much. We will come you wholeheartedly and uh, pray that God will always enable you to be able to come here. And we also pray for the blessing of God to remain with you as you serve the people. And uh, dear viewers, our topic of discussion this morning, we want to just, you know, to take it, you know, step by step, we deliver. This is also part of the service that the honorary members of parliament also are making to the country. And we are looking at the prospects of a national budget, the prospects of a national budget that is for people's social economic well-being, social economic well-being, social economic growth. And our major question is hinged on uh, with this financial year budget favor all Ugandans' social economic well-being. Dear viewers, do, be much interested in this, whether you're a business person, whether you are a youth, whether you are yet employed or not employed, this is a, a pertinent discussion. At times, some things go long and you don't know how they have gone long because you are not part of the process of the discussion. And uh, this is an inclusive you know, aspect that where we bring in the discussion to, 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 to have you know, all participants, you're also outside there a stakeholder. Very soon, we are counting few days to have a statement, you know, uh, the reading of the budget by the, is of course, the, 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 the president, but there always delegates, indeed, the Minister of Finance, uh, to tell us how the, both the income and expenditure of this country in the next one year, 12 months. 12 months matters very much. And I'm privileged to have come across a document and this document, which was a discussion that was presented by the, by the Minister of Finance, and it is, it is called the, the Budget Strategy, Financial Year 2021, 2022-23. The theme by then time, it was looking at industrialization for inclusive growth. That's one. Employment and wealth creation. In the summary of this document, because that was presented by Honorable Matia Kasaija, Minister of Finance, Planning and Economic Development, on 9 September 2022. Dear uh, viewers, the reason why I refer to this uh, brief document is that you must know that to come up with a budget statement, it goes through a process. And part of the process includes even conferencing. It includes participants who are not only the members of parliament. Of course, there are also technocrats from different ministerial sectors that make a valuable contribution to the coming up of budgets, which are discussed now into committees. And it ends up back to parliament. Our members of parliament here, one of their role, they do participate in the appropriation, you know, appropriation of funds, allocation, at times, you know, the approval of supplementary budgets, approval of the budget. And in that process, it happens to be most of the MPs, they indeed belong uh, to committees of parliament of where part of this key item in the due time, it is always very much more central to all MPs that, they are, that are inclined under committees. But at the end of the day, whatever budget can come over, whether you're in a committee of natural resources, health, education, but the, the main the main outcome, by the time to come up with a statement, it should reflect, you know, the national outlook. And the national outlook, in this sense, it should be looking at the social economic well-being of the people. The political is obvious, which is handled through registration and so forth. And also maybe the political actors also have their budgets and so forth. But now, all of us to be up in the country of Uganda, 
as I just address it to our honorable MPs, and it is something which is obvious knowledge they have, is that we are looking at how every Ugandan can be happy in his country or her country. We are looking at a Uganda where some of the resources which have been reported to be stolen no longer to be stolen by some of the few individuals. Please, it's my pleasure to have you once again. And I, I will start with you, the Honorable Member of Parliament of Magora, Magora South, to give us your opinion in this matter, to tell us, maybe give us hope to Ugandans, give us analysis in this perspective, maybe the, the strength of this budget that's about to come, and maybe the challenges that you are already aware of that you are going to meet. Uh, thank you, dear moderator. Um, first of all, I will make a revision of the theme to uh, the theme for the budget of the financial 2023 will be modernization of the economy mm -hmm. through commercialization of agriculture, industrialization, and digital transformation. So we are looking at majorly three aspects, commercialization of agriculture, industrialization, and digital transformation. And that was well said and mentioned. Um, when we look at the budget for the financial year, 2223. Um, dear viewers, we get interested into how government will earn money. That's the side of income, which is revenue, as well as the side of expenditure. When we were with the National Planning Authority, they said that the, uh, the, the most challenging part of uh, Parliament and other, um, other, other stakeholders in budgeting is we concentrate much on the expenditure side and we kind of relax on how government brings in money. I'm ably and well-informed inform viewers that we have issues when it comes to revenue and expenditure. When I look at the structure of the budget for the financial year 2023, really I should say it is not a proper budget. Um, I will begin with uh, how unrealistic the budget was when it comes to uh, recurrent versus capital expenditure. You know, government estimates to collect close to 25 trillion. And for the previous financial years, right from financial year 1920 and this one, 2021, we've been getting deficits. There was a shortfall in financial year 1920, a shortfall of 3.5 trillion. I'm looking at income. Mm -hmm. Financial year, as of now for 2021, we have a shortfall of 2.3 trillion. Sorry, that was the previous financial year. This is 21-22. For the previous financial year 2021, we had a shortfall in revenue collection of 2.3 trillion. Now... I doubt whether coupled with all the challenges of COVID-19 and its impact on businesses, I'm so skeptical of whether we shall achieve the budget. But to that, the budget is always an estimate. Mm. You can go above or below the budget. That is not a crime. Mm. However, the challenging part is you have a recurrent estimate in the, in the budget for, next, for the next financial year. You have a recurrent estimate of 33.5 trillion and you expect to collect 25. That means already, you know, you have little, you will have little than what you will intend to spend. So that only makes it unrealistic. Then the recurrent budget will take 71% of the national budget. And only 29% is on uh, capital development. So when you look at the projected revenue, we cannot fund the entire expenditure in as far as recurrent is, uh, is concerned. Mm. And when we get to the side of revenue in terms of collection, as I've ably mentioned, mm. we've been having deficits when it comes to collection. Then we are asking, what is it that government has done, all it intends to do, to really uplift or boost revenue collections? Yes, we had the tax bills, they were presented. But remember, taxes come from the community. Mm. If we all observe that business is down, agriculture, tourism, and other sectors are not doing well, and government is struggling to support the private sector when it comes to earning. So, I me, mean, I still believe that we may even fail to collect 75 or 
of what we estimate. Mm -hmm. So when, it, when we get to the other side of expenditure, yes, government has tried to allocate some money to the parish development model. The reason as to why I'm bringing it now is it is, a, it is anticipated, as uh, always said by His Excellency, that the parish model is the game changer. Mm -hmm. But we've, 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 we've had previous, I mean, several of, of, of such government interventions in a way of boosting uh, monitor, of monitoring the, the economy. For example, Tandikwa, Emioga, Bonaba Gagawale, all these have been done. And when you look at the way the, the parish development model is structured, it is not too different from how the Mioga was done mm -hmm. or how the Mioga was. So mm -hmm. when I look at how the budget is for people, yet you have little on capital development and you have uh, much in recurrent expenditure and even you are not so sure of where you would get the money. Then that one comes to uh, external funding when you look at the debt burden of this country. Mm -hmm. Yes, when you look at social services, for example, education, when you look at health, that brings us back to human capital development. Mm. When you look at the education sector, how much has been allocated to the education sector in the budget? It's a policy of government to have each sub-county at least have a seed school. And each parish should have uh, a primary school. But that, for me, that is not the point. What is the quality of education that we are, we are giving to our citizens? When you look at the budget for next financial year, actually government does not intend to construct many schools. And what it has done, um, they are identifying those so many schools where government can support the private sector in financing so that Ugandans can access education. Though government is trying to, remember 60% of the education sector is in the hands of the private sector. Mm -hmm. Government is relegating its responsibility totally. You know, much as we admit Uganda operates under a liberalized economy, true, uh, government is working hand in hand with the private sector. But I mean, a lot has been left to the private sector. Mm. Much as we want to put work, education is becoming, I don't know, it is now it is becoming just for, for whoever, anyone who can afford. Because I, I would like to, uh, to ask the Honorable, how many of those that have money can take their children to uh, government schools? Education is a necessity. Mm -hmm. But when you look at the way government is prioritizing schools and, you know, the quality of education that we are, we are giving to our citizens, I think there is a, a, a lot of, of relaxity. Mm -hmm. of laxity. Um, when it comes to secondary education, uh, I will give you an example of Maogola, Sembabule. Mm -hmm. In my constituents, I have only one seed school. One seed school. One seed school. Out, 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 out of uh, three sub-counties, we have only one seed school. And I'm the most populated, my area is one of the most populated uh, constituency in Maogola. Actually, mine is the highly populated. But that aside, at least me I have. But we are in the budgeting process and there are those, those districts, sorry, those uh, constituencies that have no single seed school. Mm -hmm. Then when it comes to the side of health, Funding of the health budget, 50%, is money from donors. Mm -hmm. How can you have a country that has its health sector purely in the hands of donors? And when you go to, gov to the government, most of the government hospitals, we have the private wing. And you know what? We thought government would give the best of the health facilities in this country. Mm -hmm. When you go to, for example, Masaka Regional Referral Hospital, the one I'm familiar to, if you want to have access to not cheap, but at least quick health service, you'll have to go to the private wing. Mm. We admit there are several challenges of, yes, the, the workers, yes, we may have challenges of uh, COVID-19 and its impact, but this is not happening for the first time. We've been complaining about issues of health facilities for quite a while. Mm. And, you know, it is now deteriorating time to time. We actually, we were looking at government were, was taking a direction of having specialized hospitals. But how can you start having specialized hospitals when the quality of the ones you have is very lacking? Mm -hmm. When you go to health center threes in our areas, health center fours, I mean, you, they cannot give the services one single, for example, if you go to a health center three, 
you cannot get a, a, a pregnant woman scanned. Hmm? Mm. When you go to some health center falls, they cannot, they have no theaters, they cannot operate. The ambulance system of this country is highly lacking. That is why MPs resorted to buying ambulances. So much as we may say, the, when you look at policy and structure, mm. it is well articulated. But when it comes to the practice, this mm. is totally different. So, and when it comes to the, uh, to the side of electricity, as a, as a, as a, as a, social, as a, as a, a facilitator of social services, electricity is becoming purely too expensive. And 80% of, the, of, of, uh, of uh, the distribution generation is in the hands of the private sector, 80%. So that is why we are finding power too expensive. This makes the cost of production in this country simply too high. Mm -hmm. That is why capital, uh, sorry, the cost of capital has also turned it to be high. Mm -hmm. And this is uh, alluded to the, the, the domestic borrowing by this government. Mm -hmm. So I think... Uh, we must critically look at the economy and see how to, to revive it. Mm -hmm. You know, we had, we had uh, an alternative when it came to the budget framework, but even right away from the chart of fiscal responsibility, mm -hmm. we are complaining about the financial indiscipline. Mm -hmm. And we're like, why do we always have supplementary budget in the mm -hmm. supplementary budgets in the first quarter? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How can you have a supplementary budget that has 80% recurrent expenditure and 20% capital. And how can you have a supplementary budget of activities that are foreseeable, that are very avoidable, and can be planned for because you know you cannot, they are, they are, they are, you, according to the financial and accounting regulations, I mean, they, 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 you cannot have a supplementary for things that are foreseeable. Mm -hmm. So we are looking at poor, budget, poor planning. Um, I think it is deliberate all inadequate budgeting that you will see supplementary budgets that get close to 40 30 percent of the uh, of the annual budget i'll take you through the the, the ones that we had previous the previous financial year mm -hmm. you have a supplementary budget to buy vehicles mm -hmm. you have a, a supplementary budget for classified expenditure mm -hmm. you have a supplementary for budget salaries. for salaries mm -hmm. really that is very uncalled for so this in this plan when it comes to financial management it must stop. Mm -hmm. Yesterday I had a training with, uh, it was at the law, law school Makere, mm -hmm. and we are looking through of how the COVID money was used. Mm -hmm. And the auditor general has put a red flag on the Ministry of Health and how it used the COVID money. First of all, procurement processes were flouted. Uh, they did not account for the money. And there are several irregularities that were highlighted. Mm -hmm. The work plan was so good as well. You remember, we, we got so many donations Mm. They, were, they, were, they, were, they were spending they were spending money off how do we call it? It was you know, the, the, they were requested to first bank the money, then use it I mean, but they were spending on source mm. so there were so many irregularities and uh, the auditor, I mean uh, even parliament made a report and uh, they, they recommended for a forensic audit mm. so if we have these irregularities in expenditure mm. Mm, mm. failure to account for public funds you cannot think that we can, you know, without proper use of the little that we have. Before we even look out, you know, much as you may have a budget that is recurrent, but at least, well, I mean, discipline, there is discipline in expenditure. Mm. So all this coupled with issues of corruption, hmm? mm. uh, the, 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 you know, when we look at the side of revenue, mm. there is that shrinking space when it comes to uh, the sources of revenue collection, Business is out there, people are crying. That is, I think, the very reason as to why government looks out for visiting the agriculture sector, though, through the parish development model. Though to us, that is also a, a red flag, because uh, the budget for agriculture has been reduced on the assumption that a lot of money has been uh, put in the parish development model program, which the president uh, I highly cite, I mean, highlights that it is a game changer. So if the parish model does not yield the, prospected, the, the expected benefits, challenges are so high that the agriculture sector is going to be seriously affected. And you are aware that 70% of our people are in agriculture. Mm -hmm. And we are saying, really, do we think capital is the challenge in Uganda? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. People, have, people are going to be given money. What is the other side of the market? But they are telling us the parish model is going to cater for market. We shall, do, we shall see roads constructed. You know, we shall see uh, farmers trained. 
But up to now, I should inform viewers that in Maogola, we've not even formed circles yet. We are in the process of forming circles. So I think there is a lot to really learn and relearn as we plan for this country in the side of the economy. Thank you. We are, going, we are still with you. We still have enough time. But I will just beg uh, the Honorable to make a brief statement and you will resume in the second session of our break as we, we take it up. Please. Well, what can I can say, uh, to be honest, is that uh, uh, all of us Ugandans, are in this situation together. There's no one that is outside what our aspirations are. The enduring problem we face as a country that affects everybody, regardless of who we are, where we come from, what parties we belong to, and so on. Regardless of all that, we are in the same boat. Okay. Thank you, Honorable. We will take it up from there. That statement is a strong one. It holds a lot of water. Let's go for the break, and we will just resume in our second you know, uh, session, of which is the point. Thank you so much.